A good recording can be cheap if you allow more time. A good recording can be fast if you allow more cost. A recording can be fast and cheap if you sacrifice on quality. You need to decide which two attributes will work for your situation. It cannot be all three, good quality, quick to make, and easy on the wallet. I'm going to assume that 100% of you watching this don't want a poor quality recording. A bad representation of your songs gives you less of a chance to attract new fans. These days, anyone has access to the tools required to make a quality recording. If your recording has any chance of being noticed, it must be comparable to the rest of the music on offer in your genre. To start, I want to talk a little about home studios. I think it's great that recording is more accessible than ever. I've had a home studio myself for 15 years now. I'm all for them. If you have the equipment and know how to use it, by all means, make your album using your home studio. If you're 100% confident that the results you can achieve will be an acceptable standard, then go for it. If home recording is just a hobby or a way to create demos, if you don't have all of the gear that you might need or you're a bit unsure of where to start, the best thing to do is go to a professional studio. Try to think about your home studio recording objectively and decide if you really can produce the required results from it. Remember the basic rule of recording. Whatever goes into the microphone, including the characteristics of that microphone itself, is eventually what comes out of the speakers. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's prepare to record. Choose your songs. Your musical intention and the reaction from your fans should make it obvious which of your songs to record. If you're an indie rock group, for example, maybe leave the 15 minute doom opus for another project. You should also choose your songs based on the format by which you are releasing them. So as a basic guide, a single should be your best, most catchy, most popular song. Its purpose is to entice people to listen to more of your music. An EP should be a handful of your strongest, most popular songs, including your single. It should capture the essence of your sound and convert people into new fans. An album is where you can include all your best songs, but also show some diversity and depth to your sound. An album converts your fans into super fans. Whatever songs you've chosen, make sure you've done so before you record. Be well rehearsed. The best thing any band or artist can do to prepare for the studio is to know your parts and be well rehearsed. Before you step foot inside a recording studio, before you press record on your laptop, you need to be as tight as you can possibly be. If there is any doubt in your mind that you can play your part correctly, it will translate to your recording. Be confident, be rehearsed, and leave no room for doubt. Recording takes time, and that time is worth money. When you're in a recording studio, you'll be paying by the hour for the service. If you don't know your part, if you can't play in time, or if you can't hit that note, then not only are you wasting your own time and money, you're wasting the time and money of everyone else involved. Pre-production. This is just a fancy name for a simple process that everyone should go through before recording, even if you are self-producing. Pre-production is like ironing an item of clothing before a job interview. You get rid of all the wrinkles and get it looking as best it can to serve the intended purpose of making you look good. Make rough recordings of your songs and then listen to them objectively. Ask yourself if they could be refined or made more effective in any way. Can you add or remove some instrumentation to accentuate the feeling or the meaning of the song? Can you use dynamics more effectively? Now is the time to listen to your songs as your audience might and make any adjustments before you commit to recording them properly. During pre-production, once you've settled on the final arrangement, it can be helpful to create click tracks in the correct time signature and tempo with any changes during the song included. Click tracks. Not everyone needs one, but musicians who don't are very rare. Unless you want your recording to fluctuate in tempo, you need to record to a click track. Set the tempo and meter of your clicks to the pre-production songs that you made, and then practice to those click tracks every day. 
Get really good at practicing with a click track, especially if you are a drummer. Take your click tracks to the studio and give them to the engineer to use or to reference so that they can make their own. Recording to a click track also makes it much easier to correct tempo fluctuations and performance mistakes later on if necessary. Post-production techniques like uh, sound replacing, edits and delay effects are much more effective if the song already has a mapped tempo. Equipment. Your gear should be in the best working order it can be. If you're a drummer, have new drum heads on your kit that you've tuned, played and tuned again. Just to be clear, tune your drums before you get to the studio. Get your instrument serviced by a professional before you take it to the studio. A good service will minimize the risk of fault and will ensure it sounds the best it can. Budget. Decide how much you are willing to spend on your recording. Take it seriously, look at a few local studios for their rates and determine how much time you will need to record the amount of music that you want. This is where many people decide that financially they're not ready to record an album and they record an EP instead or delay recording until they've saved some more money. If you're in a group, discuss how much everyone involved is willing to contribute towards recording. A $5,000 album is much more realistic when five people are paying for it. Studio Essentials There are many different types and levels of recording studio. From paying a friend $200 to record you in their home studio, to paying 20 grand to record in a world-class facility, you need to know that you're getting value for money. Research the studios in your area and make sure you're paying the going rate for the type of studio that you need. At a very basic level, a professional recording studio should have the following. A dedicated, sound-treated recording space. A selection of microphones suitable to your project requirements. A professional audio interface or mixing console with eight channels at the absolute minimum. Professional, high-quality monitors. An experienced, professional recording engineer. With these requirements, you can get a huge range of different quality studios, so use your discretion. Read reviews, ask around, do your research, and most importantly, listen to previous recordings made at that studio. Finding the right studio is important to a successful recording. The atmosphere and the people you work with can affect your recording as much as an expensive mixing desk. So make a list of all the studios in your area. Visit their websites and take a look at their pictures, their gear lists, their previous clients, and compare their rates. Narrow the list down to your favorite studios within your budget and call them on the phone to discuss your project, ask about how they would approach recording you and anything that they would expect from you. Sometimes it can be useful to meet at the studio in person and discuss your project to make sure that you're on the same page. If you do decide to make a booking, sometimes you might need to make a deposit to secure that booking. Again, listen to the previous recordings. Do you think that they'll suit your sound? Could they adapt if need be? If you're a math core band, for example, it might not be the best idea to use a studio or an engineer that's only ever worked with soloists. Then again, book more time than you think. Does it take you roughly 40 minutes to play all the songs from your potential album from start to finish? Then one hour studio time should do it, right? Wrong. Studio time includes setup for every instrument and setup to capture that instrument correctly. A good engineer will have an idea of what you are going to record and they might have some microphones and a signal chain set up and ready to go. But they will always need to position, listen and adjust many aspects of that signal chain before they can press record. That's before we even start on the multiple takes and layering required to get everything just right. This is where your rehearsal and preparation becomes apparent. As a general guideline, unless you're some kind of wizard, book enough time to record one song per day. That's recording only. Mixing and mastering are entirely different concepts and we're going to discuss them at another time. Discuss your project with the engineer and they can advise you further on how much time they think you might need. Thank you for watching. 
Please let me know what you'd like the next video to be about in the comments, hit subscribe and head over to the Musicians Map Facebook group to discuss your musical journey. Also head to musiciansmap.org to check out my ebook and my audiobook about growing success in music as well as a whole lot more free content and information.